Welcome to a tutorial on how to create an automated test or regression test for a configuration in IBM's Maximo. I'm Andrew Mayen, Director of Product Development at TRM, and this tutorial will simulate a life cycle of a Maximo project. Uh, first, I'm going to create a simple Maximo configuration and then a fix for that configuration. Then, leveraging the power of TRM's ramp up perspective in the TRM's Rules Manager Studio product, I'm going to create some unit tests for those configurations uh, and then just show you how we can group those together to create a release management uh, portfolio. First, let's create a simple configuration. For this, for this enhancement, I'll use an auto script. Uh, this enhancement will automatically set the work type in work order tracking to emergency when the location is set to our breaker box, BR450 in this case. Unit tests let, that leverage the browser are called walkthroughs. To create a walkthrough, I'll create the action in the test explorer and select or type it in my Maximo URL. At this point, a browser opens up and is recording everything I do in it, from the username and password to the Maximo events caused by my input. So let's navigate through Maximo and create some assertions here. In the work order tracking page, I'll first add some baseline assertions to make sure that my work type is initially empty. You can see empty. Then, entering my input, BR450, I'll add an assertion that the configuration has fired correctly. And it has. My work type is now EM. I'll, ask, I'll also add an assertion here uh, to assume that my asset num has been set as well. Uh, now I'm going to sign out and this will uh, bring up my save file and I'll call this enhancement 450. And my test is now saved with all my inputs and events, including my username and password. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, uh, giving my assertions IDs that will make it easier to document in the results uh, spreadsheet that occurs at the end. Now I'll disable my configuration and I'm going to give this test a run. You'll notice that I have at the top there, configuration disabled. The test will notify me when assertions run with either a green box in the bottom right for success or a red box in the upper right for failures. After the test runs, we'll get a results spreadsheet telling us what files ran and what assertions inside these files ran along with their statuses. Uh, a test file will be marked as failed if any assertion in the file fails. We can save this spreadsheet for our records. Now, let's enable the configuration and give it another run. This time, we're going to see that all of our su uh, assertions succeed by the little green boxes in the bottom right. My initial value is, is empty, that's correct. And my work type is set to EM and I get all my little green boxes. <clears throat> and at the end, my results will show the success of my file. Because we use an auto script, our configuration falls short. It does not work when the location is set by way of the asset field. I'm gonna create a walkthrough here uh, to demonstrate this. I'm going to now set my input inside of the asset instead of the location directly. And I'm going to assert that my location got set. And I'm going to go over here and assert a value, even though it's empty, of work type. And you'll notice that it should be set, but it's not. So I'm going to save this file. Let's call this fix451. Fix451 is all about... Uh, firing this configuration when it is fired through the asset versus through the location. And I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to set my uh, assert IDs like I did in the previous test, giving them more intuitive names so that it'll be easier to track in the documentation later in the results. 
And now I'm manually set my value of my assertion to EM. Let's give this a run. And we will see now that with my auto script and in play, it will fail and give me my red box in the upper right. Now let's quickly uh, disable our auto script and create a rules manager rule. Uh, this will fix our newest issue as rules manager has some functionality that auto scripts does not, allowing us to work around this issue. Uh, notice there I added an always fire flag. That's uh, what rules manager, power of rules manager. And otherwise, this is pretty much the same as our auto script where I'm going to um, set my work type uh, to EM when the location is set. And I'm going to commit it and I'm going to run my last walkthrough uh, to make sure that that rule is in play and working correctly. And there you go. We have work type equals EM. We got our boxes, our green boxes in the bottom right. Great. Here's our results file. Now let's go ahead and categorize these tasks for release management. So categories are a way of grouping our uh, walkthroughs together. So let's create a, a category called release 1.1. And this is going to include our original walkthrough for enhancement 450. And so we released that and we knew that it worked. Um, so we'll verify that every time when we run it. Now we're going to have a release 1.1. This is for our fix. Uh, we'll want to include uh, release 1.0 in that as well to make sure that everything in release 1.0 works in addition to fix 451, the thing that we're, the fix that we're releasing as part, part of release 1.1. And a release or a category can be run as just as you would test. It will run all tests underneath that including the subcategory. So first it will run the subcategory release 1.0, which includes enhancement 450. We'll see this passes. This is with our rule enabled. And then it's gonna run fix 451 and it will pass that as well. So our release 1.1 tests uh, passes all of our automated tests. There you go. You can see our results file along with both files and their results.